This is the NTSU Exec Elections on Fly FM. President. First question I want to ask you, Jeremiah. Why are you the strongest candidate running for president this year? What makes you a better candidate than Matt? Um, well, what makes me a strong candidate is um, I'm a hard worker. I think I've shown that throughout the year. Um, I try and stick to my tasks. I try to get them finished. Um, I'm also a very good listener. I like to take what other people are saying into consideration right before I make decisions. And I think when you're going to be the head of a student union, you need to be able to do that as it's all about the students. As VP Services this yep. year, what has been your biggest achievement? Um, well, I think there's been a mass array, to be honest. Um, I've just today finished uh, running a Global Week tournament for the first time it's ever been ran. Um, we had 16 different teams, um, over 100 players, and that ran smoothly over two campuses. Um, as well as that, I also organised um, the first carnival, um, the first street carnival in Freshers' Week, um, which was brilliant, um, and that um, catered for five halls and that fell on the first Sunday of Freshers' Week. So I've had um, a couple of good tr crowning achievements, I'd say. So bar the role of VP Services, yep. what other experiences have you had within NTSU, maybe before you were VP Services, maybe during your time this year, that um, equip you for the role of President, do you think? Um, well, to be honest, I've, I wouldn't say I really engaged with the union before I became VP Services. I played for the football team, um, but I didn't really get um, involved with uh, the structure of that. Um, I just used to play. Um, I'm just a sociable guy, approachable, um, friendly, I believe. And I think you need to be all those things if you're going to be the face of um, the organisation. Looking at your manifesto a bit more specifically, yeah. you said that uh, you want to work with the uni to increase relations at a local level, a regional level and a national level uh, to help post-grads. How exactly are you going to go about doing well, that? Well, um, I want to try and um, build the relationships we've got with um, the partners of the university and also like local businesses as well. So for example, you've got, um, you've got Santander that, um, that, uh, that's uh, situated inside of Newton. Um, I'm looking to increase links with them um, to um, maybe provide more um, internships and job opportunities for students um, post-graduation. Now, Marcus Boswell, who's the current yep. president this year, the year before yep. he was VP Services, yep your VP services this year and yeah. you're running for president. So how do you think you're similar? How do you think you're different to him? And do you think that's helped the fact that you've had similar paths? That's um, definitely, I look up to Marcus um, and I talk to him quite a bit. Um, I'd say we're similar in that we're both driven. Um, we're also coming from very sociable backgrounds, but um, what I've seen in him this year is I've seen him grow as a person. He's taken on the role as president and he's become very serious but still approachable at the same time. Um, and I hope that I can make that same journey. Um, at the moment in my current role, um, although it is very serious, um, you don't sit in as many serious meetings and speak to as many important people as you would do as president. One of the things that Matt said as well yeah. was that uh, he sat in a lot of meetings with Marcus this year in his role as VP, in, VP Education. Do you think that puts you at a disadvantage when you've just said that you were in less meetings maybe? Um, uh, to some extent, yes, as um, there are um, educational meetings that I've not sat within, um, that there's, there's things I don't know, um, but we've got a very good staff network here and I'm a very quick learner, so I'm sure I'll be able to pick those things up quite quickly. Um, I have sat in some important meetings, don't get me wrong. Okay, so City, Clifton and Brackenhurst, obviously yeah. Nottingham Trent University has three campuses. How would you look to improve all three of those campuses in different ways? Um, well, in terms of the city, I think we just need to best utilise the facilities that we have. We've been in this building for two years now, and I think we need to push on and try and get more things going on within um, this building. Um, on Clifton, we've got the regeneration coming up, so we need to make sure that that goes smoothly and that the, um, the students are aware of where everything is and where they need to go, um, and also look to try and utilise that space um, and in terms of Brackenhurst, Brackenhurst is a very different offer. We've got different students over there. So it's, with Brackenhurst, we need to be over there and we need to be finding out what they want to do and try to best um, deliver that, but also doing it um, in a realistic way. Um, I'm currently the head of the Entertainments Committee, um, so I'm always out on Brackenhurst. 
um, speaking to the students there. And what I've found is that because they've got such a small community, they know what they want. And we just need to facilitate that. Um, I have got a lot of exposure this year, but president, I'd say, is that one step up. Are you ready for that? Because it's um, obviously a lot bigger, isn't it, going from yeah, services to managing um, all sections? To be honest, um, I think you, you can never be re really ready for an exec role because there's so many things that you, you realise once you come into the role. Um, I'd say I, I'm as ready as I can be and I'm ready to learn. So yeah. in terms of your manifesto itself, yeah. what are your big manifesto points? What do you really want to see happen next year? Okay, well, you put me on the spot there. Um, I mentioned earlier that um, I'm looking to build relations with the local businesses and the regional and the national because I feel like uh, when you come to university, it is to get a degree, but it's also to get employed after that. So by increasing those partnerships, we're, making, we're giving our students the best chance to go into the working world after university. I think that's really, really important. Um, on my manifesto, I also mentioned course resource. Um, at present, we have loads and loads of students um, that don't feel that they're getting their offer tailored to them. Um, so they're receiving the same kinds of printing credits and the same kinds of funding that the other students are getting in other schools um, when the workload is completely different. Um, for example, you have history that need to print off loads and loads and loads and loads of paper um, for every single lecture and they receive 20 pound printing credit. I was a criminology student, I received 20 pound printing credit and I didn't even use that printing credit. So I feel like we need to try and tailor the offer for those students so that they're getting the, they're getting the best chance to do the best on their course. Do you sometimes feel like the exec office is like this wonderful little portal that you live in and the students don't necessarily know where you are? Are you saying about Marcus being yeah. the face of it? but do you think enough students know about the exec and know how to contact I think, you? I think a lot of people know about the exec. I think, I'm not sure if everyone knows how to contact us. Um, the idea is for everyone to know where we are and for us to be transparent. That's why we're in the fishbowl upstairs. Um, in Clifton, it's the same. We've got a fishbowl as well. Um, we, we, we do want to be approachable, but I feel like we need to get that message across to students better to let them know where we are and let them know that we're always there to listen to what um, they want to tell us. Um, I think it's something we can definitely work on. So do you think as well Brackenhurst and Clifton, it's something that, that that relationship needs to be a bit closer. The Brackenhurst development is going on at the moment and Marcus was saying about he's disappointed they won't be around to see that concluded, but that's mm. something that surely you must be excited about as well. I'm very excited. Um, like I said earlier, the, Brack, uh, the Brackenhurst community, very good community, um, very tight knit. Um, I feel like they've deserved something like this for a long time and now we're giving it to them. Um, I feel like with the regeneration, the union can be more of a presence on Brackenhurst and I think that's always a good thing. What about Clifton as well? Um, Clifton, we've got offices over there. Um, we all have a day in Clifton once a week. Um, I think we're doing, we're doing well in Clifton. We could always do better. Um, I think we should maybe publicise when our days in Clifton are, so students know where they can find us, so they can come and talk to us. But other than that, I think we're doing a good job on Clifton. I am asking for um, a freeze on accommodation fees, or at least some kind of discount. Um, Do you think UPP would agree to that though? UPP would also be um, involved in the talks, as we're three separate organisations. They'd all be at the table. Um, and I think they'd have to listen. If enough students wanted this, then they'd have to listen as the students are the ones that are living in those residences. What has been the biggest challenge for you this year? Um, the biggest challenge? That's a hard question. I literally just thought of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question to ask. Um, the UKIP situation this year was difficult for the exec to deal with, wasn't it? I mean, I suppose that was a time when the exec must have had to really pull together. Yeah, I'd definitely say we did pull together in that situation. Um, it ruffled a few feathers, but I feel like we dealt with it quite well. So what do you think? Do you think representation has improved this year? And how do you think it can improve next year as well? Because last year, 20, I think it was 25% or under 25% of people voted yeah. in the elections. How do you encourage more students to vote? Uh, another puppy room? No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I think, to be honest, we need to get that message out there and make people aware of how important the vote actually is. How do you do that? Um, we need to do that by showing them how relevant the exec officers are. And we do that by, sorry, pardon me, publicising the things that we do for them.
because I feel like we don't shout about what we do. Um, so sometimes people don't always understand what we're doing um, and how we're helping them. What would you say to those people that say the puppy room was obviously, I mean, everyone knows it, it was a scheme to try and get more votes. <laughs> For those people that are skeptics and say, oh, you know, why did the SU need to do that? It just shows that not enough people care. What would you say to those people? I'd say that's not true. Um, I think people care, but at the end of the day, everyone's got busy lives and everyone's got their own thing to do. And I think adding an incentive uh, it's just giving those people that have got a lot going on that there's a reminder, there's an election going on, make sure you vote and thank you for voting, here's a puppy room. So why should people vote for Jeremiah Anson as president for 2015-2016? Um, you should vote for Jeremiah Anson um, for SU president because I'm here to listen to the students, I'm here to represent the students and I'm here to win for the students. Okay, Jeremiah, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. Just remember that for all your candidates for VP Activities, VP Community, VP Education, VP Services and VP Sport, you can view all their manifestos online. You can also have the option to reopen nomination for any of those categories. And for all the information about the candidates, please check out the FlyFem website and the Trent TV website.